Hello, how's it going? How's it going, friendos? Hi. How are you? Hey. No, what's, uh, it, it, what's the matter? Are you nervous? No, I'm kidding. Hey, let's, <laughs> let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. Uh, now, before we get into anything, uh, uh, let's introduce ourselves. Um, why, uh, Suha, do you want to start? Sure. My name is Suha. I am uh, vice president of my own indie studio, Truant Pixel. I am also a founder of uh, First Bite Studio. Um, I am a lawyer and a writer and a voiceover director. Damn, that is a lot of hats. Like, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <Yeah>. indie life. <laughs> Most people just stick with, are just good with lawyer, but uh, you, you're like, I'm also all this good shit. Damn, good for you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Max, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Max. Uh, I'm a comic artist. Uh, I live in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I do a comic. I'm the artist for a comic called Jack Delivered. So check that out. Um, yeah. Give us the pit. Give us like the the elevator pitch on Jack Beloved. In like in like one like what will get people to uh, read? Or, uh, or if you're Jack? into like queer stories, but you also like monsters. If you're kind of into both of those things, and you like, but you also kind of want more of a fantastical epic element to it. Um, this might be the comic for you. Um, people yeah. who like queer stories and monsters. I don't know if there's anyone online. Yeah, no, it's not. That. I don't think. I think. I don't think it's gonna take off. <laughs> And uh, sweet, yeah, I, sweet beefy mm. boys also, which was a big draw for me. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, we, the main protagonist is kind of a short, beefy guy. <laughs> um, now, before we, uh, or not before, but let's, let's just jump into. I made a Twitter thread, uh, suggest asking for suggestions for topics. Um, Suha, let's start with you. Is there one you wanted to tackle? Well, the people have been asking, and to be honest. Um, when I knew Max and I would be on here together, I knew this would come up anyway. I think we need to discuss um, that that beefy men agenda, uh, okay. you know, yeah. advance it, etc. Are you into beefy men or something? I'm not. I'm, I, you know, that, it has that, been said a, a time or two, and I'm I'm here to say that yes, the rumors are true. <laughs> ah, okay. I, I had like a sense that maybe a, a himbo or a uh, was in your was in your interests, but uh, okay. Let's talk about the big beefos. Now, I guess just easy first question, like, who's the ultimate beefo? Oh, man. I mean, are you talking about, like, the whole package or just, like, design? Like, nothing else? Well, at first I'd like to know what the whole package means. What's the whole package? So if you look at somebody like, you know, Dudu from Firehouse, Firehouse, wow! Firehouse. Fire Emblem Three Houses, yeah. Firehouse. Now I the, want the, the fire. fire the uh, Fire Emblem. I wish it was called Firehouse. Firehouse uh, <laughs> AU. This is like all of them and ooh, to do in uh, Fireman suspenders. Mm, Nintendo, but... please call me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so so if you look at somebody like um, to do or Gladio from um, FF15, mm. you know, now Gladio doesn't cook. Dudu does, but like Gladio is rich, he's very nice, you know, mm. he's well connected, like you could have a good life together. And if you, you know, go for somebody like Dudu or even Raphael later on in his ending, like he has mm -hmm. an inn and he cooks, like, so you, you have like that kind of whole fantasy, but then there sure. are people like Endeavor who are very nice to look at and like you have to just, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's, that's where it where stops. <laughs> that's where it ends. Endeavor, huh? Hmm, I'm okay. sorry. I know I mean, you know that. that I mean, <laughs> I've I mean I've seen that ass, so I understand. But it's I'm also problematic like, fave. Ooh, okay, okay. So, uh, interesting. So I guess uh, ultimate package then. Who's the top top dog? Ultimate package, uh, beefo. Uh, oh, man, you go ahead, Max. I'll go. Yeah, after. Max, you got a beefo. Uh, I just. You know, I just keep thinking of Beauty and the Beast. The Beast, I don't know. I just oh, Beast. He's just oh, do you, do you like the Beast from Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, uh, a yeah. little bit. <laughs> a little he's bit. Just, okay, yeah. He's just because he's you know I just like that he's you think he's an asshole at first and but he's just really just a dumb soft guy <laughs> beneath. That. So I you just, like those sundere those sundere beefos. I can, yeah. Uh, I can. I can definitely appreciate um, when there's multiple layers in a character. Like you first think there's one thing and another. I think uh, this is kind of completely uh, not related to Beast at all. But Zuko from the Last Airbender is another 
kind of Zuko's not a beefo, but he's a but yeah, he is the same <laughs> character type. Yeah, right, like, he, you, like he kind of he kind of has this front where he's like a total, you know, kind of a total uh, <laughs> asshole. But uh, mm-hmm. I, you eventually just kind of get to know him, and he's just he's there's a lot more to him. And I, I can really appreciate when that when a character has something like that. Oh, listen, that's like my that's my favorite archetype in anime is the well, there a lot of them are girls, but no, even though especially blushy boys, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Sundare's fucking rule now. Yeah, uh, Suha. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm gonna say I, we try to do some of that in our our own stuff too. We try to do that. Mm. <laughs> oh, you do have that going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a little bit because <laughs> that's what we and, like. Uh, Suha, for uh, do you even like beefos? Can you think? Apparently, you're struggling to think of an <laughs> ultimate beefo here. I mean, I did an entire talk about this, or like part of somebody else's talk um, at mm. PAX last year. I still think that I have to give it to Dadu and Gladio, but Dadu is much bigger, so I feel like in that respect, he has to edge out Gladio. But it's a tough call. Uh, it's gotta be to do right. I mean, he he cooks. He's a very good he's, boy. He's kind and he's loyal. <laughs> uh, like if you and- logic it out, you know he he's so close to Dimitri. You could probably be rich. Like I'm sure if he you know asked for like a lordship or whatever, like he would totally give it to him. So <laughs> I <laughs> damn if you care Suha, about that kind of thing. Suha climbing the ladder and. <laughs> Firehouse Society. Interesting. Okay. Listen, you have to do what you have to do. I, I, I In the words of that. Cardi B, I need cheese for my egg. <laughs> that <Sorry>. is... <laughs> put that on my fucking tombstone. Uh, uh, Max, I uh, you're familiar with Firehouse, right? I'm calling it Firehouse. Right, uh, uh, just just by uh, being in the same room as someone who's playing it. But a little bit. Um, who, who was... Was there a best boy for you in in a firehouse? Kai, you know, I'm, I'm gonna mess up with the names, but there's that big. Oh, guy, that's fine. Describe them. That big nice guy who's uh, he's nice to everybody and he's kind of stupid. And is uh, he blonde? Raphael. Yes. yes. Uh, oh, big beefo, big beefo. <laughs> I just okay. I have a, I have so a weakness. Good. There's yes. someone. There's kind of a similar archetype in in. Um, I've just recently been playing Hades. Uh, everyone's like, <gasps> mm, yes okay. um, oh and there's that guy make someone play and i i'm gonna embarrass myself i forgot his name but is it sisyphus a guy who pushes the um the boulder yes up? yeah um or i i kind of have a weakness for him <laughs> i mean like i'm like a picture of this guy what how do you spell his, uh, his character model is not that cute to me i'll be honest but i could see that, he's that's very sweet. shade okay that's uh, fair i mean <laughs> sisyphus uh I think oh, it's, but it's not just, okay. it's not just about how he looks though. It's about how he carries himself. See, for, I, I mean, Suha, honestly, I used to think the same It's not just about how thing. he looks, Suha. No, no, no. <laughs> I used to think Raphael, like I, I didn't like him that much because unfortunately his 3D model is not that cute, but yeah. I really grew mm. to love him over the course of the game. So now I don't care, but like, so I, I will not, I won't, I won't down him just on that. He's very sweet in game. This guy kind of looks like Shrek. <laughs> 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 I won't down him, I say. Well, I can't. I, you know, I, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I didn't find Trek a little bit. You know. Oh, I mean, okay. Well, we'll get into that in a second. But um, <laughs> so, describe Sisyphus to me. Like, what, what's he like? Well, he's this guy. He's so in mythology. He's like just pushing this boulder up and uh, doing it forever. But he's just still very like warm. Like every time you walk into the room, he greets you and he's really mm. nice and he gives you a free gift. And he's always like, um, even though he's like, he's basically damned. He's he's to, mm-hmm. to do this for eternity. He still keeps like yeah. a very um, positive outlook, and it's just like I can oh. I can really admire that. Um, okay. And also, he's, he's, I, I think he's a little cute, but I'm not. I think for me, it's just like it's it has to. I can be attract. I can have a raw attraction. Like I think Ganondorf's like just attractive, but I wouldn't. I don't. Think yeah. I'd, I don't think I'd fall in love with Ganondorf because you know his other affectations. Maybe I don't. I'm not as into. No, you have to read that um, that comic. I, I'm trying to remember the name of it right now. Oh, a, that no, no. I I know exactly what you're talking about. It's the yeah, tale because of two, there. Oh the my tale god, of two like, that made me love him. Yeah, he's that's really a cool that's now. a great comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that comic. Um, what was it called uh, again? For just for anybody the, else, I, I the tale of two remember. rulers. It's a fan comic. It's yes, thank extremely you. Extremely high quality. The Zelda Ganondorf comic. It's it's very good. It's it's um, really good. I see him totally differently now. Like the same way that um, 
David's like fanfic made me look at Bowser differently. It was the same for Ganondorf. Yeah, like now I just love all Ganondorfs. I love it when yeah. a when a fanfic writer can just just really br- like um, bring that to a character that you normally wouldn't mm. have thought much about. That, that's really I can really appreciate that. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, that that fanfic is a lesson in honesty by Mude. Uh, check that out on archive. What is it? what the fuck's what of our archive, archive of our own. Of our own. But Archive sorry, you also own. did a video of it. I also did a video, a, a full <laughs> radio play production of it on the channel. You can watch it. Please watch it. I spent so long. <laughs> no, it's it. so good. Like, please read it and then watch it because reading it and listening to it for me were like two totally different experiences. Oh, like, I yeah, like you yeah. I think, you, I think you appreciate it a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. If you've read it first, I would agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I would also recommend. Um, uh reading it first but uh you know uh, i'm actually just curious like not to uh uh suck my own dick here but uh <laughs> i'm like i'm curious as to like what did, what did you like about or, appre- or appreciate about the video because i actually didn't ask that many people i just sort of went up and i was like yeah and i was like thank god I, I think i was just floored by how professionally well like professional it was like damn this is like high quality uh, yeah. production mm. um just it, it was just very just... well acted and cast like it, yeah i mean i know that's very generic but like it was just really really well done mm. well, i appreciate like that. everyone sounded yeah. like they should yeah i for me um uh as soon as i was reading that you know fanfic it made me want to dub it like it was that good right uh by the way we're talking about uh david who's he's been a guest on the podcast before old mude uh who is uh, uh, Desmax's husband? If we hadn't yeah. no, said that so far, said that yet, but uh, oh, yeah, Mawid, um, it's our anniversary today. Oh, oh, my oh God. congratulations! <laughs> Happy anniversary! Thank you. Uh, and you guys will never know what day that was because you don't know what day we recorded this. Ha! <laughs> 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 um, sure showed you. <laughs> sure showed you. And now people are gonna be like, oh hey, 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 hey dogs. Uh, what uh, what what what's your anniversary? So I can know exactly what day the Pro ZD podcast episode uh, was recorded. It's, it's a secret. Uh, it's yeah. Secret. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, he's a fantastic writer, and uh, yeah. As I was reading that fic, I was like, I want to dub this just because, and it's and it's interesting because you know it's not even like, because uh, normally with a lot of that stuff, when I used to dub a lot of stuff, if I was like, hey, there's like, uh, characters I can voice. Like, I want to dub it. But with this, I was just like, I just want to hear this. And because Princess Peach is the main character. And it's like, I'm not mm-hmm. going to be voicing Princess Peach. Uh, but I was like, I love this dialogue so much. And then when the Bowser scene was in, I was like, well, I definitely want to. <laughs> I definitely want to <laughs> record this. Um, so it, it, I don't know. It, it was it, it awakened an urge in me of like, you know, that that. Because, you know, I got, I got my start online doing, like, dubs of things, right? Con- mm. Fan dubs and all that. And, uh, yeah, so go check that out. And also, um, I couldn't have done it, I mean, without Tamara and Jane. Uh, like, I think they both kill it. And Tamara oh, yeah. especially, like, ha- trying to find someone who's... Because I, cause I had worked with her on... Prin- like, I'd had her voice Princess Peach stuff before, um, like, as for fun. But I was like... I need someone who can sound like Princess Peach, but act, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think she did an amazing job. Like, it, it, it like, it does, because like, she, initially both of them came, kind of came to it, like, do you want, like, spot on, like, impressions? And I was like, no, mm. actually. I don't want, like, I don't care so much about, oh, you have to sound exactly like the games. I want you to capture the character's spirit um, and, you know, use it as a guide, but. Yeah. I'm honestly more interested in like more in uh, getting into the dialogue as opposed to we got to make sure it sounds exactly like uh, so and so or whatever. So yeah, I feel like the that games don't give choice. Peach a lot of range. Mm-hmm, so I would mm-hmm. definitely much rather hear like you know, like you said, just whatever you feel like fits. Which is I think why everybody just sounded so like the way you would imagine them when you're reading it. Yeah. And it was also the first time I had ever. Is it the first time? It must. I think so. Like, I had ever like live directed anybody. Uh, really? Cause, oh wow. Yeah, because because <laughs> before that I'd always just be like, ah, just I, I would still give them like feedback. Like in, when I'd worked with people in the past, I'd be like, just send me the recording. I'll listen to it, 
And if I need retakes, I'll ask you for retakes. Mm -hmm. But for this, I was like, I want this to sound perfect. And I have a lot of the dialogue. I know exactly how I want it to. Well, not exactly. I got like, for example, I mean, we can get into voice direction in a second, Suha. But like, <laughs> for example, I, I never want to give them. Oh no, I did maybe a couple of times, even though. But they are they're also fine with it. Like you know, but if you're just giving them line reads the entire yeah. time, right? That's not something you want to do. Um, but it's it's more of like helping helping guide them to like this is where I want to land. But if you surprise me or you know do a read that oh, oh that really works, you know it, it it's a fun collaborative process, and so it was actually a very rewarding experience for me to have to do that because I I think because if I hadn't done it, I think it would have been uh, harder to put together because I mm -hmm. I. I was I wanted it to, like I could just hear like the scene in my mind and uh, it was all about just trying to make sure it matched what I was sort of going for. Which, Do you think you want to uh, direct in the future? Is that something you're kind of uh, you know? You <laughs> know, in it's interesting. Like uh, I think if you had asked me like I don't know a couple of years ago, I'd be like, no way. But <laughs> I feel like um, so. These days, if someone asks me, do you think you'd ever see yourself doing this? Uh, usually my first reaction would be like, oh, no. And I think a lot of that is because, especially professionally, uh, acting is the most important thing to me. And it always will be, I, I think. Uh, it's always what I'm going to enjoy the most and pursue the most. But then people have been like, well, have you ever thought about, like, I don't know being acting on live like live action i was like huh, not in a million years and then anime <laughs> crimes division happened and i was like yeah. well okay yeah i guess i'd be open to that and then like um you know people a lot of a lot of people ask me like would you ever uh write would you ever do vo directing would you ever design a board game and a lot <laughs> all these things i think before i was like no and now as i'm like sort of dabbling and doing stuff i'm like you know i mean i think my answer to people is always if the opportunity came up uh yes i would do it is it something that i'm but is it something that i'm gonna pursue like heavily no but i think mm -hmm. i think you definitely have a creative itch and uh mm. i think doing that um a sort of radio play that you did um what, scratch that itch so i could definitely see you in the future maybe directing some projects um kind of you know, some along those lines or you know who knows i mean mm. i would love to see that honestly it's funny because all those things you mentioned are things that i would have asked because i'm very like i'm the person who is like so what are you doing in five years or like if i'm talking to creatives it's like are you working on something you know mm. what's the thing that you wish you could always do so like I always wonder that stuff when I see what you're doing. So <laughs> I'm glad that you just got that out of the way for me. That was going to be one of my questions for you. Gotcha. Yeah. Like I think for me, uh, I mean, even, even like stuff like on the YouTube channel, just like there's a whole universe of like King Dragon skits or whatever. Right. Yeah. Even that is like fun to develop and that's very low, low stakes, very, but there is a, there is a continuity to it that I actually keep track of. Um, and I, I, I do get asked, like, would you ever want to, like, create your own original thing? Um, and the answer is, wow, that'd be cool. I, I'm not that person who has, like, that dream po project in my, in mm. my pocket. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. every, there are, there are people who have, like, oh, I've had this since high school. This is my, like, dream, my characters. I, like, mm -hmm. I've been, I don't have that. And that's not some, like, I, I would almost be more interested and I've kind of been lucky enough to kind of do this with acting is like kind of taking stuff other people create. And it's a bonus if it's like something I'm already a fan of. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, um, like I could never have imagined myself like, Oh, Hey, uh, you're in, you're in the borderlands game. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, like that's, <laughs> that, that's not something that like, you know, 10 years ago I would have even fathomed. Right. When I was, cause that came out, came two came out like 10 years ago or whatever. And yeah, I remember, yeah. I was playing. I was like, it, "That would be cool if I could be in a game like this one day." <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and it, you know, it it does like, 
I think the best voiceover sessions are one that actually give the actor a lot of creative, uh, a lot of creative freedom. So I do get to scratch that itch in the booth, um, and but I do also recognize something that's been kind of funny is that doing stuff, especially during COVID, doing stuff for fun for me, uh, as opposed to having to worry about oh like. Uh, will other people see this? Will other people like like it, or will it make money? Um, has been really rewarding and sort of made me more interested in pursuing those routes potentially professionally. Mm. Like, because because you guys know uh, I run trivia nights, right? Yeah. And yeah. those trivia nights have been like, wow, I really like m- messing with game design. Uh, and by the way, for reference, uh, for the listeners, these are like very extensive, like uh, Pokemon themed or Mario themed trivia games inspired by a uh, good friend Elvis, who's been on the podcast, uh, with like elaborate rules and whatever. But um, you know, I, I'm pouring like hours and hours of of work into this, and it's only for my friends. It's akin to DMing, to be honest. The amount of work like prep work and then stats mm. and all that stuff that you're doing. Like oh, yeah. it's absolutely yeah. that. Yeah. I, I, it's something where I go, I, I, I mean, I remember I was asked by friends like maybe pre pandemic, uh, would you ever design a board game? And my answer was just straight up. No, I would know. <laughs> but now my answer is if the right thing came along, uh, actually like I don't have a strong enough idea on my own. Uh, where I would like uh, be like, yeah, I have, here's my pitch. But um, it's funny. I've been playing like some licensed board games lately. Like there was this actually very good Cowboy Bebop deck building game <laughs> that I yeah. reviewed recently. You know, I looked at the cover. I was like, yeah, this looks like it's going to be shit. Yeah. <laughs> but then and then you play it and you go, wow, these people actually like Cowboy Bebop, design a good game around it. And I would actually like own, like keep this game and play it again. Like, and it made me go, you know, this is what I do with the Pokemon trivia. What I do is I take what I love about the games, try to convert them into a different game system. And so I'm almost like, if the right company was like, hey, we want you to adapt this property into a game, that could be its own sort of fun uh, challenge. Or mm-hmm. like from a writing perspective, like if if uh, it was like, hey, like we want you to adapt this into this, you know, that could be you know uh, a lot of fun too. It's essentially writing fan fiction, <laughs> is if <laughs> is if you get hired uh, onto a thing that you already are aware of. Um, and then I guess for the V for directing, VO directing is something that's really interesting to me. I don't know if I want to do it enough to pursue it a lot because it takes up a lot of time because I know people who direct uh, like and they're just their schedules are packed and mm-hmm. as a result some of them are like yeah I don't get to act as much because I uh, you know I'm just constantly directing so it would have to be something where I wouldn't it wouldn't interfere with what is my main sort of sort of goal I guess um now, my question to sort of both of you is, um, while, you know, we all have a lot of interests or whatever, do you have a main creative goal in your in your life? Um, and either of you. And if you don't, I'm also curious to hear that answer as well. So when you well. say a main creative goal, are you saying, like, this is the project that I want to make? Oh, uh, like... I mean, I guess more uh, main creative focus path like okay. what like is there something especially you suha because you know, you know you do a lot of things right yeah but like yeah. if you uh and the it, it, you don't have to have just one for me i i think of myself and what i love the most is acting so i consider myself an actor first and foremost mm-hmm. uh and then you know writing and whatever that that's like kind of like secondary uh but acting is what I, and YouTube to me is also secondary. Uh, acting is what I love the most and I'm most interested in like sort of growing and developing that. Uh, and if I guess for either of you, is there something that fits that category for you? You go ahead, Max. Uh, 
Well, unless you need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of interesting because I I think I've always wanted to do art. I've always done mm-hmm. art um, for as long as I can remember. But for me, the problem was how was I, how am I going to focus this, this this sort of skill that I'm developing? Because um, I went to school um, for art and I just did fine art for the most part. Um, and then I kind mm. of I sort of discovered that I preferred to do illustrative work. And then from there, I, I discovered, oh, okay, maybe, you know, comics is, is a pretty good fit for me right now. Um, mm-hmm. So I love doing narrative art, um, and I've been doing it for a little bit. Um, so I'm still kind of, like, young in my, I guess you could say I'm kind of, like, um, early in my um, creative journey. Um, but if I could just, I think my creative goal for me is I, it's very rewarding just to reach an audience and to see how people react to your work. And mm. really, I, right, my goal right now is to keep working on my projects um, and kind of build an audience and see where that goes. Um, of course, the ultimate goal for me would be to be financially, you know, make it financially viable. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so, yeah, that's kind of where I, 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 I'm in a really good place creatively. I'm really grateful for that. Um, and I, it, it took me a long time to get here because um, I was just kind of flailing around for a while. I feel that so much. <laughs> mm. Now let me let me ask you, Max. So, because um, I because I remember uh, I've known you a very long time. So you know I you know mm. I remember the, the fine your your fine art, uh, which was very good. And then you know, but it is it, you know I I think back then especially and you I think were even talking about it back then. You were like I don't I, I don't think I could have imagined the Max I knew then being like. Oh, I do a full narrative comic now. You know what I mean? <laughs> you were so like, that's not me. I'm fine art. You know, I don't. You know, I only yeah. draw, I only draw Luigi or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, and that's it. Uh, and so, seeing seeing the shift has been very interesting. Now, it's interesting to me that um, you say when I ask you your creative, what's your creative sort of priority or path is. Uh, to reach an audience first before saying art. Now, my question is, if you were able to reach an audience a different way, it, would you, Would you like, is that what's more important to you? Sort of like... Uh, uh, no, not, this not, is not, not hmm. really, actually. Um, I, I guess I did say reach an audience. I think why I say that is because I just love seeing people react to what I'm doing. Um, but I kind of want to be on my own terms. I love that we're, I make, I'm working on a project that's, you know, it's, I'm, I'm collaborating with my, my partner, but it's still, mm. you know, it feels like it's my own. And, um, I love that people are responding to it and it, it it's already mm. been starting. Um, so that's just immensely rewarding to both of us is to see people respond to it. But uh, obviously too, creatively, I want to, um, improve. Um, but the thing is, when you work on a comic, any comic artist is going to tell you it's like art boot camp. You're going to improve exponentially mm. as you're working on it. Mm-hmm. So that's already been happening. Like that's it's it's a goal, but yeah, it's a it's an ongoing goal. I always want to learn. I always want to grow. When you're doing a comic, that just ha- that's 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 par for the course. Um, so of course that's a goal too. Um, but I guess it's kind of, I feel like it's kind of assumed. <laughs> like you know, uh, I mean, it's very gratifying for me uh, to watch you because. You know, you remember, or we've had, we, in the past, we had, I always gave you this spiel of like, hey, you just got to find something. You just got to work and work and work at it. And, <laughs> yeah, and then, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, I know it's easier said than done, but listen, it, well, for me, for me, like the Tumblr thing, that was me like every someone, day, right? You know, you're an inspiration to me. I mean, I took your Aww. example, how disciplined you are. And I, I, you know, that's, that's a that's what I want to do too. I, I've been very, and I'm very, very proud to say I've been very disciplined with this. And I haven't mm. always been good about that in the past. So I think you really mm. taught me a lot about being dis- disciplined is the most, everyone talks about, oh, I'm not motivated to do art. Oh, I, mm. I just don't feel like it. Um, mm-hmm. But I think a big thing you taught me is like, it doesn't matter if you feel like it. <laughs> you just do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do say that to people. Like, I don't, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's not about, oh, I feel like, Oh, listen. If I if if I if my work output was dictated by if I felt like doing it, I wouldn't get any shit done. <laughs> oh, exactly. Like, Honestly, <laughs> like I tell people all the time, the big difference between like having an idea or a dream and having a finished product is just like making yourself do it. Because yeah. inevitably, every project, and I've shipped multiple games, like every project, whether it's like a fanfic or like 
a full script, you're going to reach a point where you hate it and you don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. And you just yep. have to, it's not about like killing yourself doing it, but it's the keep moving forward slowly, even if it was only two words today or whatever, yeah. like you just have yes. to keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there always and has to eventually be, it's done. There always has to be that balance because you don't want to burn out, right? You don't no, want to, you don't no. want to get to you the have point. You to listen to yourself. Yeah. You don't want to get to the point where you're like, oh, this is the worst. But you can't also be like, well, I, you know, I'm not motivated today, so I'm just going to play video games and I could work on yeah. it, but, <laughs> you know. No, I know a lot of people who are unfortunately purely inspiration based and that's fine. It feels good when you're inspired. But the problem is like they're going to talk about their novel or their whatever forever because you you can't only work on inspiration. I see a yeah, lot of artists I, and writers that put themselves into like developmental hell, you know, development hell, I guess, mm -hmm. <laughs> where they just kind of like they're developing their characters at world, but they, they don't get down to the grindstone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I always, I do always tell people though, um, cause I've, you know, I've given the spiel to so many people like that I, you know, cause it's always like me going, I know you can succeed and like, you know, you, you can do it. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's all, I think what's important though is to, when you, when we say discipline, creative discipline, it's like setting a realistic goal for yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Cause I think a lot of people, it's very easy uh, to go, well, I'm just going to do this and then it's unattainable and then they fail and they go, well, I failed. So I ah, just, I can't do it. Uh, and I just give up. What was the point? And it's like, no, like, I think you put it very well. So how, like, what was it, like two words is, I mean, like, it's like, Hey, can you do like, what is the bare minimum of creative work you can do? That's still momentum. And it's, even if that's like, like, you know, an hour a week, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That exactly. is forward momentum, right? And it's that something. is better than doing nothing, right? Uh, yeah. And and it, it you know, uh, and God, people who know me are like always oh, going into this, but you know, once I always <laughs> tell people, it's this thing of once you start doing it, like it's always about getting yourself to start, right? And then like you start, you know, doing your drawing or you know your for me it was you know recording audio, and it's like. Oh, you like doing this, stupid? Like you, yeah, <laughs> you, you love, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I do like doing this. It's just, oh, I gotta make myself get getting, up. Getting getting started is the hardest. The hardest. I part could I could eat a pizza instead, and it's like, well, yeah, you. But you know, it. Or I could play video games. You um, know, and I think another thing to keep in mind, I think too, is I think some people they they start off a routine, and they make a product or something. Um, mm -hmm. and then they're, they're just, um, they're demotivated because they're, it's not getting attention. They didn't, they didn't build the mm -hmm. audience. Yeah. yeah. I, I've seen that happen too. And it's kind of heartbreaking because it's like, no, you just got to keep going. You got to keep making stuff. Yeah. Cause maybe your first thing wasn't the hit that, you know, it, 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 that you hoped for, but you, you can make better things from the previous thing that you made. Not just yeah. that, but like with a lot of creative stuff, even including games, which you would not really think, I guess it would work this way, but like. The consistent updates sometimes are what get you there. Like my yeah. visual novel, Akash Path of the Five, which incidentally is how I met Sungwon um, mm -hmm. when he was like in the prime of that Tumblr voice recording time. But like it didn't when it first came out, it didn't really hit either. But like now it's doing fine. Like if you look at it on Steam, you know, we have like a number of good reviews and like it's still going way further than what I thought it would. But like if you're only looking for like you you might not find your audience immediately but like we kept updating it our vr football game like it it did fine mm. and then we put it on oculus quest and it like exploded just because mm. for some reason like that platform was right for it yeah so like sometimes with game stuff you have to put one out and maybe it doesn't do so great but you have to keep going and working on the next thing and then either it will take off or it won't, but yeah. like you just, it sucks, but you have to keep moving forward because yeah. if you just go, oh God, nobody liked it. Nobody likes me. Nobody, you you'll never up. go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like sometimes your, your baby dies. Oh God, that's so morbid. Sometimes your project <laughs> dies <laughs> to yeah. make room sure, for sure. the success of something else. Uh, now let me ask you, Suha, like with, you know, Akash and, you know, with these games, like, and you know, when, was, was it creatively fulfilling to make them just without any... A, a door, yes. yes yes and to me that's what's uh, same, same most <laughs> important right yeah. i mean yes obviously you want to make you know make a living and you know uh but what i think is most important is 
at the end of the day, it was creatively fulfilling to you. Uh, it was uh, growth in creativity, right? You, I yeah. mean, you learn so much from creating and getting better. Mm-hmm. You're always getting better uh, just by creating and working on something. And then, yeah. like, if you can also, like, make money off of it and help support yeah. yourself, I mean, that's great. But I think those first two things are uh, extremely important because well, that's going to keep I'm you gonna... going. If you if you're not enjoying mm-hmm. what you're doing, mm-hmm. then you're not going to keep going. I, I hear about people who they try to chase what's popular. Like I'm gonna yeah. make the thing yeah. that everybody wants to read or write or or, or, or um, watch or whatever, and mm-hmm. they're making something that they don't like, and it's just like, well, that's not. Get, you're only gonna get so far, and people are gonna know if you, can, if you watch something or read something that somebody is making. They're not in, into it. I mean, it, it shows through. You know. Right. I mean, we live in the real world, right? Like you have to consider in some cases, like what's gonna sell and what's not, and like mm-hmm. obviously, I. I have a sort of privileged kind of setup. Like, so it's a lot easier for me to say, like, I really don't care what's selling right now. I just want to do what I want to do because like, thank God my house is not riding on what I'm making. Mm -hmm. But I, I still really believe that like, if you're only chasing market stuff, like gigantic game studios have risen and fallen trying to do this. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. (laughs) Just a second. My son is trying to, (laughs) <laughs> sorry anyway <laughs> oh no no there, I have a... we, we can edit anything out so do, do you need to okay are you good it's fine i was just saying giant studios have sort of risen and fallen um trying to chase market uh what's the word trends mm-hmm. so like at the end of the day i feel like you need to just do what you like and then try and figure out how to convince people that it's what they're gonna like too because if you just yeah <laughs> if, if you do that it's gonna be empty like if you try to follow everybody else yeah uh like did, did either of you watch um soul yeah oh no i still need to Got although um, the newer pixar stuff hasn't grabbed me as much so i haven't been very motivated oh listen but... i've got a whole video talking about how i feel about new pixar stuff i don't know if, <laughs> i don't know if you saw i ranked all the pixar films but uh, i have to watch still um i, I feel like the same soul? way you do but i did like soul uh did you uh, like i soul? liked it too yeah, yeah i enjoyed it hmm. uh, okay. and, and i don't i'm not gonna spoil anything about soul but i think soul really tackles that sort of like um message of it's not, you know, a lot of movies are about follow your dream and achieve your dream. It's about your dream. Uh, and, I mean, dreams are great. And, you know, you know, especially, like, career-focused dreams. Like, oh, I want to be this. I want to be this. Yeah, I want to yeah, get yeah. this. But uh, it's really not all there is in life. Mm-hmm. Like, And I, I think that movie has such a very valuable message about that. Like, um, so many people are focused on... Oh, I just gotta, but you know, I gotta get my career up to the, you know, and, but, uh, you know, kind of tying back to what I was saying before with like, as I'm making, as I'm des- designing an absurd Pokemon trivia late into the <laughs> night for hours for an audience of 10 <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> I'm like, I am enjoying this so much. Like, this is just so much fun. And it's kind of nice to not have to go, Oh, but will uh, will my subscriber base like who like I, it doesn't matter, right? So it, or, or, yeah. I mean, even just the simple things of like, um, or I don't know, like even like people who don't like pursue or have like a creative job, right? But have like creative urges. It's like you know, find fulfilling those urges and you know, and stuff for fun. I think is very is very valuable as well. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Now. I would like to give either of you or both of you the opportunity. Uh, we'll start with you, Max, because I, I think I let Sue Hop. Did I let Sue Hop pick the Twitter thing? I don't remember. I think so. <clears throat> I think. I forget. Anyway, Max, <laughs> is there anything, uh, any topic you want to bring up or any question for me or Suha or both of us or anything? Just anything. If not, uh... pass it to Suha. <laughs> Uh, well, we I I want to talk about creative stuff, and we did so. Okay, so end cool. the podcast. Be... All right. Well, it was <laughs> end the podcast. <laughs> well, I didn't talk about my sort of creative. What did you say? Creative goal? Main creative oh, yeah. goal? Oh, that's right. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. Please. Oh no, it's okay. We'll do that first, and then you can bring up something else. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. We we were just all we just got swept up in 
creativity in general. Um, oh, no, I mean, it was but, great. No, but please uh, uh, answer the question. Yeah. I mean, so it's it's hard to choose because, like, writing is the first thing that I did. And I love it. Mm -hmm. But directing, I fell in love with sort of I, I did it by necessity, like, because we weren't going to hire a director. Mm -hmm. But then when I did it, I really loved it. Mm. So it feels kind of like directing is like the dessert that I get after I finish my script writing vegetables. But the problem <laughs> is I'm doing directing right now for my friends at Lunaris. Mm -hmm. And it's so great. But part of me is very like Russell Crowe in the window gif of like, <laughs> when's it gonna be my characters and my <laughs> scripts <laughs> I, oh, I mean yeah. don't get me wrong like it it feels like when it's good it's the same high like mm. when the line hits properly it's just as exciting yeah but like the whole time i'm doing it and and i mean they know i do this so it's not like i'm <laughs> it's like my mind isn't focused but the whole time i'm doing it i'm like man i want to get this actor in for this character like my game already has a cast like <laughs> pre-written even mm. though i've never spoken to any of them just because i love it so much like i daydream about it so i don't feel like i could separate the two well because when you do writing you dream about one when you do just directing you dream about i want them to say what i've written too so i feel like making games is really i love it hearing allows about, me to do both. i love hearing about how that's worked together because i never thought about like oh you're a writer so yeah of course you're but you're directing so of course you're you're kind of thinking about doing your own stuff that's really interesting it, it's nice because uh, with games especially, a lot of the time when you hear, you know, sort of wooden acting mm. from a really great actor, it's because they didn't have either the director kind of just had them run right through it or they didn't have very good setup. So, you know, you you put somebody like an Oscar caliber actor in the booth but he doesn't know that he is an android on the moon who's shooting at the guy who betrayed his partner. Like things like that you know mm -hmm. that make a really big difference so it just so when you've written it and you can just tell them it really makes it go a lot easier and then also conversely when you've written it like you know what you want so you know you can communicate that faster yeah. so it's it's nice when you can have that i think that's all true i am going to maybe disagree in a, a bit the the whole get an oscar caliber actor uh, and that'll guarantee a good voiceover performance. Uh, no, I'm saying that's not true. I'm saying uh, if you have an Oscar caliber actor, they can have an awful performance if they don't know what if the they're director's, doing. Yeah, the director's not giving them the direction. They oh, but I don't. I don't think it's necessarily oh, you... the director's fault. That's what I'm disagreeing on. Uh, oh well, okay. Yeah. I mean, obviously, people can voiceover is not the same as like you know, on camera or stage acting or whatever. So I don't mean to imply that. I'm just saying No, no, no. And I don't, I don't no, no. I, I'm just, I, I think it's, because um, I know exactly what you mean. Like when I listen to other people who I know are voice actors, if they give like a, mm -hmm. a wooden performance, I almost always give them the benefit of the doubt, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm like, you have no idea like what information they had in the studio. Like, exactly what you're saying, right? Yeah, uh, like the or, or the director maybe didn't give them enough or whatever or maybe it was just something they just didn't care that day i mean that's fine like you know that, and that's not a, even a slight against the actor like you know sometimes you're just like ah, i just you know i'm gonna I'll, I'll be i'm coming in to do some stuff whatever like just let's just have fun um mm -hmm. but you know i think um i think there's and I'm, and I'm not saying you you think this Suha, but i'm just saying for i think there's this misconception that some people have of like oh like uh, they're an amazing on-screen actor, so obviously voice acting is something that um, that they should just be good. Like for example, there's that very famous what Peter Dinklage or whatever in. Uh, you know, I didn't mention his name, but he's exactly. Who well, I, was I don't thinking think Peter about. Dinklage is listening to this, so I think I think we'll be okay. <laughs> Peter, Peter Dinklage was in Destiny or whatever, and he was replaced, right? Yes. And yes. I, I didn't actually listen to the performance, but I heard it was kind of wooden kind of like there is one particular line that i'm thinking about like there's a place you go to that's like the world's grave mm -hmm. um it's like a it's like filled with all these zombies and stuff and like even this joke he says something about the grave and then he's like uh the world's grave not ours <laughs> it's just mm. so, it's really bad but i will say with that one they replaced him with nolan north mm -hmm. and like and nolan is amazing obviously so like 
it was it just wasn't the same because we got so used to the wooden <laughs> like Dinklebot deliveries <laughs> that it was like Dinklebot. Oh, mm. I miss it. it <laughs> he, he played this little like mm. you know robot. We yeah, no, yeah. Lovingly called him Dinklebot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just like that name. Um, yeah, no, because obviously Peter Dinklage, amazing actor, right? You know, yeah, absolutely yeah. phenomenal actor, and that does not necessarily translate to uh, because voiceover is so different right i think with, yeah. i think with a lot of anyway for me it was kind of like the opposite of doing like a like a live action thing it was mm. such a you know for me like uh and I, I think i've said this on the podcast before but i describe going into the vo booth these days as like it's like getting into a nice warm swimming pool like i'm very comfortable <laughs> like i'm not gonna say every single time but nine i would say 95 98 percent of the time I'm like, ah, yeah, this is, this is, I know what to do. This is my zone. Put on those headphones. Let's go. I'm, I'm not nervous mm-hmm. at all. Uh, I, I, I am, I am, and that was not the case early on, but uh, now I'm just very comfortable with it. On a live act, on that live action set, I was petrified. I was like, oh my oh. God. <laughs> you want me to, first off, remember all these lines and hit my marks and sometimes i gotta be doing stuff too i gotta be chasing a guy i gotta be what like you know whereas for live action actors they're like yeah what you memorize a script and then you you do the things and i'm like no i'm used to just well so for me like it the easy thing is imagining doing all those things and making it sound realistic but then you ask a live action actor hey come in this booth and pretend you're getting stabbed in the throat but there's no other person. There's no. You're literally just alone <laughs> in a booth, uh, looking at a script. Okay, yeah. you're getting strangled by a monster, and it's like, <laughs> oh, I gotta instantly put myself into that. Whereas for me, I'm like, got it, and I'm like, cool, I'm there. Like I, you know, it's yeah. about. It's like, huh. you know, because uh, for I think for voiceover, what I love about it so much is I don't have to worry about how I look, my facial expressions. Yeah. Um, and I don't have to, like, well, mocap stuff aside, like, if we're just talking about pure voiceover in the booth, you don't have to worry about what you're doing, uh, and you don't have to memorize the words either. The script is right I mean, there. honestly, like, I have, I, I know what you're saying, like, I've seen it myself. I've worked now with, like, anime actors and people who've done on camera and stage and audiobooks and, like, All of them have such different skill sets. And sometimes with some of my anime actors, I struggled to get the read that I wanted out of them. But then I hear them doing anime and their acting is incredible. And I know that it's because it's just a different, like, it's a different skill and it's a different, like, way of approaching. Like, I, you know, maybe struggled with that particular take because I didn't have the vocabulary or whatever to give it to them but like i hear them in this show and it's like my god you're incredible like so Mm. i i have so much respect for you know everybody from every discipline like it's just some people have an easier time naturally reading like gigantic blocks of text or like imagining things like oh you've got a space dagger in your gut you know things like that Mm. so i i totally get what you're saying so i i definitely don't think that like anybody can just transfer one skill to the other like you might be an incredible on tv actor and then you're terrible at dubbing anime like i i'm totally with you mm. and and oh no oh so I, I never meant like you meant like any of that i just thought, yeah, I, yeah, I just thought yeah. it was uh interesting to talk about and now i'm just curious so the, the whole like um like what are some specific hurdles Cause the, the, when you bring up anime actors that's actually interesting mm-hmm. to me that so some people are... So when we recorded Akash, mm. and I I love all my actors, so this is not a dig on any of them. Like, I'm really proud of the audio that we did for that. Mm. But we recorded with um, mostly anime actors out of uh, Houston. Mm, mm-hmm. um, a lot of, like, Funimation people, I think, mm-hmm. um, because that's where my casting director was kind of getting them from, mm. um, John Swayze. Yeah. And so, like, sometimes there were certain emotional cues, like Overjoyed specifically is one that we struggled with many, many, many huh. times. I don't know why. <laughs> I'd be like, you're so happy. You've not seen this person, f- you know, f- for days. You thought they were dead. Go. And and I'd get loud or I'd get happy, but I could not get, you know, that. But I might hear them in an anime and it's like, my God, wow. Like, I'm really feeling it. And I feel like for some people, maybe just 
being able to match sort of the the visual or the mm, the audio cue you're oh. right there but maybe me as a baby director back then i just for whatever reason couldn't get them there or like sometimes anime actors you know there's a very anime delivery ah, which yeah, yeah. you have to have mm. so like sometimes it would be like let's take the energy down let's do it a little bit more natural mm. because you know not anime so i mean it just was its own thing like the union actors it's been wild like everything we've done for lunaris now it's a totally different experience mm, wow. so like I, I wanted to ask you this actually i feel a little bit embarrassed sometimes i don't have a lot to say because like you get somebody in who like and we haven't announced this yet so i, I can't say the name but there are literally actors that i thought I would be working with like 10 years from now mm. that are just available to you. Like people that I have loved in like franchises that inspired me to become a writer in the first place. Sure. So like you get an actor in like that and, and they can do like one take, like we had to do sometimes we were in a hurry Yeah, and it's fine. And I just wonder like as an actor, if you got in there and somebody didn't give you a lot of direction, are you like, God, these people what kind of amateur hour shit is this? Or would you like, be like, oh man, I'm killing it. Good job to me. Like I, <laughs> I did direct them a little bit, but really, some people sometimes I just feel like they walk in there and it's like, okay, well, you're here to do this voice. You did it perfectly. I just want you to maybe emphasize this word instead. But like, I just want to know from your oh, perspective. I would. <laughs> how I that would comes actually across. love to give you this. Uh, so, uh, as an as an actor, if. I mean, you always get a sense of the director, no matter what, as you're as you're working with them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but if I have a session where there's they're just like great and like like all the takes like go by really quickly and it's really smooth, uh, I'm like that's awesome, um, that's good, and I would almost be like, it's almost a sign. No, I don't want to say this because, but. Uh, <laughs> What? Are you gonna say that you're doing your job right or something? No, no, no. I, I, well, no, no. I mean, that's what, actually what I think it is. It's like yeah, if I'm doing my job right, I can nail most of the lines from right from the get go. If you give me two, mm -hmm. like an A B C read, or if I give you A B C read, A B read two takes, three takes, I, can, mm -hmm. I, 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 from my experience anyway, I can get the majority of them done on the first take. Not the first take, I but the first, just, first two, three takes. Right. It might be yeah. just a sign that you're more seasoned. Like, you know, no, that's what it is experience. because you know that was not the case necessarily early, right? Mm -hmm. um, but now, like, um, and you can tell also if a director doesn't care. And mm -hmm. I've been lucky enough that the almost majority of directors I've worked with have they all care about what they're and they they act, they want a good performance. So it's not like you can like you can know if it's just like because I've I've heard you know horror stories from other actors where it's like. They're working with someone who clearly doesn't give a shit. And they just do, all right, just do one take each, one take each. Like, uh, okay. If you, <laughs> we only did that in the last 10 minutes. No, oh, but, no. you know, it was purely necessity. But here's the thing. Like, if it's good and there's nothing to change, it's honestly good to just say, good, move on. Like, uh, mm -hmm. if, if it, 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 I was going to say, I don't want to understand, but like, if, if, if I'm working with someone like a director, and they clearly just are not sure of what they want. That's actually kind of frustrating. And so they're like, mm. so if, if I if it's like we're on one line, and it's like, and this rarely happens, but like I don't know, like just take after take after take, and it's like, and you, you just feel like I feel like we're just going back to what we were doing before, to that where it almost feels cyclical. It's like. So I, I mean, so so Suha, you, you should not feel self conscious if you're not giving if you feel like you're not giving enough direction. That just go that just feels like hey, it's going smoothly, right? Whereas okay. whereas if it's like every if every single line you have to do like ten takes, mm. uh, like you know, be, or it's like mm, can you do it this way? Can you do this way? Like, but it's over and over. it's if if it's just constantly that, I would argue, and maybe some actors feel differently, but I would argue this feels like. We're not getting anywhere, or like, or or oh, or oh boy, like we're not. This is like maybe maybe they just want several takes and then they just choose one later when they edit it. I don't know. Uh, I mean, that is what we do. But no, no, like, no, and that's why you I, usually ask the actor like a norm. I'm not normal, but I'm gonna say like uh, the average VO session. You come in each line. It's like, and sometimes and sometimes people I, I've worked with people who've like uh, not had a lot of experience directing, and they're like, "How do you want to do it?" And I'm like, "Well." 
usually the easiest way to do this is we go line by line, or, or if it's like a scene, or but usually line by line for video games anyway. Line by line, uh, I'm gonna give you two or three takes, uh, and then if you need, if if it, if if any of those three sounded good, we move on. And if there's something you want to change, give me the specific feedback. Feedback. Feed. I'm a horse. Feedback. Uh, give me that feedback. <laughs> give me the feedback, uh, and then we'll hit it. And then once yeah. we hit it, we move on. I don't know what your process is like. Well, I, I do. It's the I, same I do thing. know your process because I mean, well, that was that was like that was more John. <laughs> that was a long time ago. John oh my and, god, yeah. you've seen me like in my so when I was like baby director, I still am, but I feel way more comfortable now. Mm. But when I was baby director, I had gone to GDC and I sat in a workshop with Andrea Toyas from Blizzard, mm. who is so wonderful. She's like a friend and a mentor now. I love her. But when she talks about it and she has a giant budget and she works with these big actors. And like, so she always told us, you know, actors are very sensitive, make sure that you give them like that good feedback and stuff. And so I was very rigid, like perfect. And then there's the critique. And like, I felt one of my actors one time getting kind of like exhausted with this, the way I was doing that. And like, eventually now I hope that this works. Okay. But now I'm just kind of like, Hey, can you give me one like this? Awesome, thanks. And like, it's just very kind of like light energy. So my my hope is that people will sort of feel that from me. And, you know, because I feel like trying to follow somebody's sort of, this is how you should do it. Like, it really made me very artificial and kind of awkward. So I feel a lot more comfortable now. But the actors that we work with now are also like super experienced. So I, mm. I feel like it's way easier. But like, the thing with her... Like she, you know, we're working on very tight constraints, like two hours, four hours. If we go over, oh my God, like we're going to have to pay. Like it's just Mm. a different kind of universe. So she'll talk about, you talk to your actor, you know, you take them aside, you talk about like things from their lives. And so like, on the one hand, that's a universe I'll never, hopefully maybe someday I'll, I'll live in that one, but (laughs) I'm not there yet. But I feel like on the, the flip side, I see actors talking about, oh my God, I had a session today. Wow. Like I got in there. It was magic. Like we went to some emotional places. I gave the performance of a lifetime. Like I would love to make an actor like feel that way, Mm. but I don't even know if either I or my material, because I'm a very like, as, as a writer, I love goofy stuff. I love romance, comedy. Like I'm not a change your life kind of Mm media sort of person i just want to make people laugh or blush so i don't even know if i can get people there but like the dream for me is to see an actor come out of a session and be like wow that was so great now i would settle for them being like wow that was so fun that made me feel good whatever you know i don't have to like make you cry about like your your childhood pet or whatever (laughs) but like i would love to really move somebody through working with them that way Mm. like so when i see that stuff that's why i'm like oh man, am I sort of on the opposite end where they're like, oh my God, I got in the booth and she didn't even have anything to say. She just thought it was all good. Like what kind of amateur hour stuff is oh, this? Oh, no, no, no. First off, two things. Like I said, uh, if, if anything, if I had to choose between a director who uh, gave me not a lot of direction, but it went smoothly and too much direction, oh my God, give me the first. I don't, I, I don't. <laughs> uh, I've like, you know, like I said, some directors I'm like, it, and there's a uh, there's also a difference, right? Like some directors, I'm like, oh no, this person is just more meticulous, and they uh, they, they they know they they're, they know what they want, and we're just trying to get make sure it's exactly that. And then there is some where I'm mm-hmm. like, you don't know what you want, like you don't, you yeah. don't. And, I, and that's a very small minority of directors that I've worked with in my in my career. But um, also, I was gonna say, as an actor. Uh, to to get like a high out of like uh, a session is not necessarily like it's got to be like oh no my my family died <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> for me my biggest highs are first off is the material good uh, and then is am I do I just feel like completely in sync with the director right where we're like we know we're both like yeah we know exactly we're like on the exact same page and I'm like in it and then I think on top of that it's I think the best ones are like, did I really feel like I was the character? Uh, Ooh, yeah. I, and and when I do feel that way, 
that like if it's a combination of those three or some of those three that's a high for me like you know i i mm. you know uh i i do all sorts of comedic work dramatic work you know uh it doesn't matter as long as i feel some you know there's different highs you can get i guess and it doesn't necessarily have to be like oh it's super emotional or whatever that is nice to know. Um, I mean, you know, that the, the goofy stuff can kind of enter that realm, too. Yeah. Um, now, Max, I'm so sorry we've been talking about VO for so long. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I think it's really interesting. No, I, no, I, I know I, you I, do. So I was like, ah, I don't feel too bad. But I do want to ask you one thing. Because <laughs> uh, I know I knew if you were just bored out of your mind, I'd be like, let's switch the topic. But uh, I know you actually like hearing about this stuff because I don't think we... Well, so, you so, know, there... Mm. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say there's, um, and maybe you were going into this. Uh, there's, there's a high. There's all kinds of creative highs, and I can kind of relate to you know that sort of high. I was about to ask uh, you. You read my mind. Like, so for you, <laughs> when do you feel that creative high? Uh, I, um, you know, it's just when, kind of like what you guys are talking about. When things are just coming together. Um, mm. when I'm really feeling the scene. Um, hmm. and sometimes, and this is, this is, it's kind of like, <laughs> it's like jerking myself off a little bit, but sometimes I'll look at a page that I made in the past and mm. I'll just look at it as like, wow, I really landed the emotional, uh, Fuck you know, yeah. what we needed emotionally here. Uh, yeah. I really landed it, uh, with the art and I, and when I, it actually makes me feel that emotion when I'm seeing it again, I'm like, okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, so yours I comes it. after not in the process. Um, like you're not drawing and you're it, like, oh man, no, it can't happen in the process too. Especially if mm. I, if I feel like I've nailed like maybe a particular expression, but mm. you're right in that mm-hmm. once I'm done with the page and I'm looking at it and some time has passed looking at it again, if I still hit that same feeling um, I had when I was working on it, or if I, it, it kind of gives me the same feeling that maybe the audience might have. Mm. That's that's a lot for me um but sometimes getting you know in the process of doing it sometimes if it's it's a grind but mm. i also get lost in it sometimes too um when i'm just you know especially when it comes to because drawing characters interact with each other it's its own kind of acting it's not like mm. a performance in that i'm literally doing it from my literal voice and body but I'm no you are it's, but it is, i mean but it i is assume a that you are like everybody else you make the face and you mm-hmm. you put yourself there while you're doing it absolutely like i have to think okay how the how's this character um what's going through their mind um how am i gonna how gonna how am i gonna express that in their face without like spelling it out too much to the audience like how am i gonna express something that they're thinking like because mm. dave is the he, i'm not the one writing it Dave is the one writing it. Like I, I'm looking at the script. And I'm like, okay, how am I gonna take this and 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 show it in their face or their body language? Um, and it's really rewarding when that comes together. Yeah, Max. I don't know if you're aware of this, but in animation, like the whole concept of like referring to good like character work in animation is that's people call that acting in the, in the animation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's exactly yeah. same thing, right? It's like yeah. conveying through image and uh, composition and framing and all that, like. That is that is its own sort of acting in a sense, kind of and kind of like d- directing and acting, right? Almost like you're directing yeah. the shot, but you're yeah, also it's like, I get to do you're both. Also, you know, yeah, the acting is con- is con- being conveyed through you know poses or the, expressions and so on. But yeah, the fun thing about being a visual doing the visual medium is you get to control what each character does, so you get to see exactly what their dynamic is visually, mm. um, and of course. Uh, some probably similar to film and animation too is like okay where exactly is the quote unquote camera the vantage point <laughs> um just putting that all together and how it impacts the scene emotionally um, it's a lot of fun so yeah in a way it's almost i am direct i mean dave is doing a lot of directing too because he'll he'll go over with me the drawings i'll do a rough we'll do a rough pass and be like okay is this working um how can we change this so this has more of an impact and that's a lot of fun too working with him and getting that together that collaborative element sure uh, I was also gonna say I, I kind of I can relate to you actually in like for example when you're drawing that's kind of a different feeling than when you look at the final thing right and yeah. for me that's like all my job in voiceover right is like uh, I I I most of the work is just doing it and hoping that the final product sounds good right <laughs> yeah because yeah. It, it, a lot of it is like is the you know it. Uh, I feel like this is good, but you know, is it going to work in the scene? Is the final? Are they going to mm-hmm. pick the right takes? 
And I, I'm going to say I have not actually personally, like, seen or played a lot of the stuff that I'm in. But when I'm, on the rare chances mm-hmm. when I do, uh, it's very surreal. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, uh, yeah, this, this... You get to see part of it as the, as the final product. That's... Yeah, you see the final product, <laughs> and you're like, oh, fuck. Like, this... This turned out pretty good, huh? <laughs> like, oh, do you do the dentist? That's me. Um, <laughs> that's a little, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> that's me. Um, because you know, as much as I would love to like have the time to like play everything I'm in, watch everything I'm in, I just don't have the time. So it's only it only happens to be like if I'm watching it at the time or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like I'm in fucking what Borderlands. I haven't played Borderlands three. Although part of me is like, do I need to play it? No, I do want to play it. But it's like, I already like, because the, the main characters talk a lot in that game. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like I lived the game in a sense. But uh, I do oh, want but to. Then you, but no, you I, still I, get to I see it all to, together. I do want to play it. Um, but uh, yeah, I uh, when I like, um, especially with, I, I think it, I'm usually uh, hearing myself in animation, right? Because I, mm. I, I tend to watch stuff more than I play stuff these days. Uh, and so yeah. I like, you know, when I hear myself, I'm like, oh, fuck. Huh. I, 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 guess, I'm, <laughs> I guess I'm pretty good at this after all. Huh? Like, okay. Yeah. I, I, I have the same feeling sometimes when I just see something I've done. I was like, damn. I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I... See, I don't get that. I mean, for me, it's like, oh, what an amazing actor or like, you know, oh my God, my artists. Like, I feel like I can hide my insecurity behind like the entire team. So when I see that, I'm like, wow, I can't believe what a good job everybody has done for the thing that I did. But, but, you, like, but you, I... you still did that. You brought them together to do that. You made it happen. I and That's know. amazing. I just, I, I haven't quite gotten to the point of like, yes, me. I rule. Gummy. Well, Max and I are just so cool. We're just the you know giant well, big chads over here. Sorry, but, I mean, no, 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 so let, let me ask but, you, Sue, because well, it, it seems like you know, as, you know, you, uh, you're a director, and uh, but it, I feel like I get the sense that you're uh, 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 like a writer at heart, because you know, the, when you were saying like, oh, when I'm directing VO, I love it, but I wish it was my character. It's like that. That to me feels like a like a. A cr- I think it probably a, is a writing, writing thing. To, and why not both? It's kind of. <laughs> oh no, it's it's well, not so why it's not both. Like, but let me uh, let me ask you this: when you when you you've never had like when you like sort of look like first off, do you play the games that you make through? I did play a little bit of Akash, but the problem is I had to test it myself. So like, I I played it a thousand times till I got tired of it. So I've never really like sat down and been like, Oh man, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I played it while I was making it. So I've, I've played the whole thing through. I know how everything looks. Cause I have to, like, I touch everything. Like I oversee everything. I direct everything. Mm. Like, I mean, I have an art director, uh, my husband may but like, I'm still looking at everything. So like, well, I know you do it. 100- there's nothing I've never seen. I know you've looked at them a hundred times. So let's say, the, there's a there's a scene like let's let's take a kosh for example there's like a scene and you're seeing it like fully voiced with the visuals everything's in place you don't you didn't feel that satisfaction no it does make me excited yeah. but i feel like it's still very like oh my god i can't believe like my artist drew this so good and and you know like someone did such a good job with this line oh my god but like, who it's, wrote that it's line that kind too, of, huh? Who wrote that line? <laughs> Who? And you yeah. know, maybe with the next one, like I'll I'll feel more that way. Mm. But it's kind of one of those things where it's like, if it's bad, I'll be like, oh my god, I let everybody down. And if it's good, I'm like, wow, I can't believe everybody else did such a good job. Mm, so you I don't think give that, yourself credit when it's good. I think this says a lot about you, Suha, and that you're a very gracious person. Uh, and and, oh, I, and that's no, and I, I that's part of you know I really like that about you is that you're not you don't have a big head. Uh, you're not, you're not like a big Chad like me and uh, Max over here, uh, <laughs> drinking each other's. Like, hey, yeah, we're great. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, but, uh, I call it rules. <laughs> we rule. We rule. Uh, no, but rules. like you, you're, you're very like you know, kind and gracious, and so. But I, I think also, uh, Max was also kind of pointing this out, like directing and bring making getting people together to make a thing happen and having it be a good final product is such an underrated skill right yeah like that's such an important you need some skill. serious people skills for that and, exactly oh, 
I'm not a people person. I, I don't mean, know if I like, can do it. <laughs> with, with the stuff with Lunaris, it's hard because it's like, I technically am a member of the team, but I feel like all I'm doing, especially with these like incredible union actors who are basically, you just give them the script and you tell them to go mm. and they do it. It's very weird to be like, I directed this. I did so good. Like there are a couple lines where I said, why don't you try saying this instead? Like maybe I changed the script the tiniest bit and they were like, oh yeah, great. Let's do that. So then I could say, okay, sure. I could take credit for that. But it's very hard to be like, well, they wrote this and he said it, but I listened to him say it. And I said, good job, buddy. (laughs) Even that though, you uh, you have the judgment though. You can judge that it's a good read. Yeah, I guess. I mean, that's what all VO directors do, do, right? A lot of most VO directors are not writing the stuff that they direct. Uh, It's about. I mean, honestly, like when people ask me, "Would you want to direct?" I'm like, I would be most interested in VO directing because I do think I have a good ear for or nailing the exact read that you know, or this is like exactly right, and so that's a skill. That is absolutely a skill. I would like to see you directing. To be honest, I'm very curious what your like directorial style is like. Uh, Oh, man. So with this, I mean, the final product ends up being something like that Princess Peach thing, which I thought turned mm-hmm. out pretty good. Uh, mm-hmm. I I do think, as, since it was my first time, I think I could have been, as much as I was like, hey, don't over-direct. Uh, I think I did <laughs> ask for, as I was listening back, I was like, I, I think I asked for a little too many takes. Not like, not like in a, I don't like an infuriating amount, because I, I, think, I think it was mm-hmm. a very good... I think overall, uh, it was a very good experience for everybody. Um, but just me personally, as I'm listening back, I'm like, I didn't need to ask for like this many. And I'm not talking like a, a, a excessive, like disgusting amount. I'm, but even like for no. me, like I, I guess I'm used to like, you know, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe I'm being too hard on myself. I don't know. That would have to be a question you have to ask the actors <laughs> in that. In that. <laughs> in a more I think, objective well, they're your sense. friends too, right? You may have been more loose because those were yeah, your friends. Yeah, I think that like, also I mean, may have been part of it in that I was also maybe a little looser with uh, uh, like, hey, I know like, for example, if it was an actor I didn't know, I would probably yeah. be a lot more concerned about, okay, let's just try to get it in as few takes as possible because I know, you know. Whereas it's like I know them, I've worked with, you know with them before, and they're it's like yeah I know I can ask uh, Tamara to do more reads because uh, first off she's you know a, she's good at her job and a professional and like is is game, but also like uh, I think she is willing to like go there with me of like hey like mm-hmm. um, we can we can get that exact sort of thing. Uh, it's 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 definitely if I were in like a position though kind of like you where I'm working with actors I don't know personally, uh, mm-hmm. I I think I would uh, absolutely uh, be more like all right let's really try to get this in you know as few takes as possible, um, like be very hyper focused on the direction I yeah know. but it was I, mean, you know. I think it's an experience thing too though honestly because that's how Akash was like we. It took forever. And then obviously we've changed kind of Mm. who we work with too, but I feel like it's just so much faster now. And I feel like more comfortable letting the actors kind of bring their thing to it too. Mm. I mean, I I always, I would try to be open back then too, but I feel like if you have a really particular read in your brain, I feel like when you first start, it's a lot easier to be like, it it needs to sound like this. Mm. And sometimes a line reads, you know, you, you, you can have a pocket full of them, right? Because sometimes it's like, hey, yeah. I just need it to sound exactly like this for the exact intention of the scene. I, you know, and I actually don't give a shit if people give me line reads. If they're if they're literally reading me the entire script, I'm like, okay, why why am I here? <laughs> like, but but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think I think bottom line, uh, it seems um, it seems like uh, we're all uh, we're all very creatively, we're all hardworking creatives, and we're we're just trying to do the best we can. And me and Max are super chads, and Suha is kind. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, as much as I, I think we could just keep talking forever, uh, we're actually, this is about the ending, around the time to end. So, um, first off, thank you for joining me. Uh, and then, yeah, Thanks for uh, having us on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I'll 
have you on again, I'm sure. And uh, why don't we start with uh, Suha, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Susu Rocket, S-O-U-S-O-U-R-O-C-K-E-T. And then, because my other stuff, it's all on that profile. Mm. <laughs> it's too many things. Or at Truant Pixel, I guess. But And what games can they play? So Akash Path of the Five is out on Steam and PS4 and Switch. And you can hear Sungwon in that. Um, and then we have 2MD VR Football, um, which is out on like ps4 and steam and oculus quest and uh, a couple other things i think as well we do have an unannounced title um an anime vr arcade shooter called runner which will be hopefully announced by the time this comes out but if not uh exclusive scoop for you someone oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm sorry and then first bite games also is uh going to be releasing in or first bite the game is going to be releasing in halloween 2021 and we have a patreon so you can find us at at first bite games. Sorry, that's all. <laughs> nice. And Max, where nice. can we find you? Um, at uh, dog. So D O G and then two S's. Uh, a lot of people do two G's, but it's two S's. And that's on Twitter. <laughs> dog. <laughs> dog. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's on Twitter. Um, I'm also. Uh, you can find my webcomic, Jack Beloved, on jackbeloved.com, or you go to Top Us Webtoons on there too. Just like. You can just Google it. And also, we do have a Patreon, um, patreon.com forward slash Jack Beloved, if you want to, if you're into it. <laughs> All right. Um, and then I just wanted to say also thank you so much um, for having us. Like, it was amazing. Um, you know, you and I, when we first worked together, we were both kind of just, you were probably a little bit further on than me in your career by then, but you were like kind of right on the cusp of starting to blow up. And it's just kind of amazing having this chat now full circle as like, you know, uh, creatives. And then honestly, when I first saw this podcast and I saw all the people you had on there, I was like, this is so cool. Like, I hope someday in my career, I can be in a place where I could come on. And so when you asked me, I was like, Oh, thank you. <laughs> so thank you well, so much. Hey, no, I appreciate that. I, I mean, honestly, uh, the podcast isn't about like, Oh, let's get all the you know who's no, super no, no. important. You know, it, 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 uh, the podcast for me is really like it's either people I genuinely want to get to know better, and I just don't know that well, mm -hmm. and people I do know, and I'm like let's let's just talk. And you know, uh, I think um, it's uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun, and like you know, I I, I kind of want to use it uh, the podcast as a way to just talk right i just like yeah. talking <laughs> you know and um i i you know i for me it's like i just want to have everybody that i like on you know everybody that i enjoy talking to uh on. and i mean i mean not not to discredit because you know obviously you know uh, i think creatively and obviously creatively we've been talking about it like the entire time like creatively both of you guys are like you know doing good shit but I think what's actually most important to me is I like talking to you as friends. That's why I act. That's the most important thing to me. Uh, and and uh, that also means a lot too. like the pandemic has been very difficult, but I've really appreciated your friendship, both of you um, this year. Yeah. So like I, I sat glad, down and I'm read through Jack Beloved to love it so quickly, like in one day. <laughs> and then now we've also oh. just gotten to be friends, which is so great. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, friendship. Oh, <laughs> United in beef and creativity. Group yes. hug. <laughs> uh, thank you, someone. Thank you, Max. All right. Thank, thank you. you, everybody.